Thatcher to her feet. So she just wanted to be an Olympian. That's all she's ever dreamed of. So to get that gold in Rio, she knew it was going to be a challenge to come here and retain, but she didn't shy away from that. And so that's why she's happy with that silver medal, because she could have easily walked away being satisfied. She she's, wanted more. she's a model competitor as well, well isn't she? You, know, you, you will not meet a more contained, uh, mentally strong, tough, and yet lovely person who has things in balance. She's got a balance. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, one of the, the moments in this competition that just summed that up is uh, during the uh, during the javelin when she came back and had a really good, she got a really got good, a good go really good, and we were all like, oh, that's fantastic, and she went right back to focus, right back to focus, and, and focused on what's next, that, you know, she doesn't spend the time celebrating and, you know, and that sort of thing, and I don't think she spends much time focused on other competitors as well. She's focused on her competition, on her performance, and that's what great competitors do. You focus on the things that you can control and don't worry about the things that you can't. What I admire the most about her, there's a lot, but what I admire the most is how she's had to reevaluate, you know, from, as you said, post-2012, it was, you know, all about her, you know, getting that gold medal, starting again from pretty much scratch, having a baby, the injuries, but what I think has been most special is how she's reevaluated how to get better. You know, she knew she hasn't been able to rely on her, her jumps as much, her high jumping in particular, but she's got better in the high That's in the a long lovely, run. lovely oh. embrace, isn't it? Oh, look at that moment. I mean, these are the gems. These are the absolute sporting gems where the reigning Olympic champion just gives a nod to yeah, the next one. Tia, fantastic. And she's on her way to Phil Jones. Yeah, I'm not quite sure she's reached him just yet. I think she's been nabbed <laughs> by somebody else. But Phil will be there and uh, he'll have a, have a chat with her. But at the moment, Katarina Johnson-Thompson, delighted to say, has made it to Phil. Phil. Well, Kat, your reflections on that? Is it is it a sense of opportunity missed? Yeah, of course. It was like one of the best opportunities I've ever had to do well. So I'm a bit disappointed on myself that, you know, I didn't execute when I, when I really needed to. Um, but I'm, I'm happy I finished and I'm not going to cry this time. <laughs> well, good on you for that. Um, tell me about the, you know, the, the highs and lows of the competition from your perspective. Well, I've had one high and six lows. <laughs> I think... Um, yeah, the high jump was an obvious high. It was a national record, a joint Olympic record with the new Olympic champs. So, um, yeah, it was not so high for me there. But unfortunately, you know, I couldn't come in today too. But the, you know, Shaban I wanted and it showed in my performances and that's why I, I'm fortunately placed sixth place instead of getting a medal. What's it like, um, and, and do you feel kind of a, an added pressure when somebody like Tiam is delivering personal best upon personal best, and you feel you've got to you've got to maintain that kind of level yourself? Yeah, I think she was um, the exception in this competition. I think she's had a, a bind in two days, and where everyone else has fell back, she's you know excelled, and I know she's got a PB six eight. Is was going to get your medal every time, and I said when I came in, it's probably going to six eight to win it or over, and it did. So unfortunately, I couldn't produce that today. But you know the kind of talent you've got within you and what you are capable of. You obviously disappointed you've not been able to do it quite here and quite now. But the years ahead, how do you see the future? How do you see yourself getting to maybe you know that consistent level that, that Jess has produced time time upon time? Yeah, well, she was just saying to me down the victory lap, like at my age, at 23, she wasn't as consistent as she was now, and I'm um, still 23. So Tokyo 2020, I'll be Jess's age when she was in London. So I think because I've showed, you know glimpses of, of good in different events people just want me to put it all together like now where it's very hard for me to do that um hopefully i can just be more consistent like like jess is when she was when she was 27. well here's here's the, the woman herself we're talking about cat say how consistent uh, you've been but not at cat's age and it's uh, it's an interesting dynamic and something that cat will be able to take with her going forward yeah, um, the heptathlon is so hard and Kat knows that it's physically and mentally draining and yeah, I know that Kat's got so much more. She's just got to stay positive and know that she can make those improvements in the throws because I was a terrible thrower for so many years and I got to this level so I've got so much faith in Kat. It's great to see you draped in the flag once again. A silver medal, a great defence of your, of your title. But as Kat was just saying, Tiam was inspired. Yeah, she was incredible and such a, such a lovely girl. And just to see her individual performances were just off the chart. So, yeah, you know, very proud to have, you know, got on the podium. And, yeah, she's incredible. 
and your reflections as you're going round on that lap of honour because it's been well, what a four years it's been getting married, having Reggie, um, and uh, coming back being world champion just a year after you gave birth. And now this. Yeah, I, it's just so hard to find the words to describe this. It's just so special. I've had you know an amazing few years and achieved so much in the sport, and I'm just really proud. I know that, um, what, four years ago it was Super Saturday. We had three golds. We've had a gold, silver and a bronze. That's still pretty super, isn't it, for the British team? Yeah, I mean, just watching Mo is incredible. And Greg did amazing as well. And I think for us to come back and got three golds on Super Saturday, Saturday again would have been a huge ask. But medals are medals, so I think we've all done really well. Go, go on it. Can I know? As well, there's been an amazing British support here, and it just shows from four years ago. I mean, Jess had just done the victory lap, and there was like about 17 GB flags in every single section. So, you know, it's helped us perform over the past weekend. So it's been, you know, incredible. That is amazing. And uh, we've seen Mo come through, Greg, w with tears. Kat says she's not going to cry. But you're clearly emotional as well because you, yeah. you've been through a lot to get to this point. Yeah, I'm really emotional. And, you know, I've got to go away now and make a big decision as to what I do. And I don't want to cry on TV, but, yeah, these years have been amazing. So just really proud. Are you... So, so you're hinting at this may be, this may be the last one? Um, possibly, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> what will be the define? What will be the defining decision? Do you think for you? Um, just to go away and you know have time with my family and yeah make a decision. But it's just been incredible. And <laughs> I just don't want to cry like this. Stop making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you go. And uh, listen, it's always it's always been a pleasure covering you, whether this is your last event or not. Congratulations on a great career and a no cat. The greatest is yet to come. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> Phil's job. That's what, that's what he does. I mean, you know, he's just, isn't he wonderful in those moments? They, they just all love having that moment with Phil. It kind of feels like the, it's, the, it's the full stop at the end of your whole experience when you have your chat with Phil. Well, you saw Matthew Hudson go run over to Phil after he, <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Hudson Smith after he finished this. Because he knows that Phil's the conduit to you. He wants to hear what you say. <laughs> <laughs> he is our dude, Phil. And those two ladies there just uh, really, you know, their emotions summed up what they've gone through in the last two days. And for, for Jess, we just got a hint there that her mind is, is not made up where she's going with this. Is she going to put another year of her life, uh, you know, sacrifice everything that she does to go to London next year and uh, try and retain her world championship title? I can't begin to put into words how difficult it is to, you know, think about going again for another 12 months. After all, she's been through already. You know, she she loves being a family woman. She, she's seen the championship. She's been, you know, double world champion, uh, you know, Olympic champion. Can she must drop the energy? You know, she talked about post-pregnancy, post-having Reggie. Oh, I didn't realise it was going to be so hard getting back. Mm. And it really is. I've been there. I know what it's like. But she... She has to go away, take her time and see how she feels, see if, um, if she'll miss it enough to put her through that hard winter work again, to raise her game yet again, because the young pretenders are coming after her, you know, they are, they're there. Um, Kat will reflect, Katerina will reflect on what's happened and she will get better. It's right. And I know we're going to talk maybe a little bit about her in a little while, but there's, we care, you know, we care about her performance. We know the potential. We know that she can iron out those glitches in the two throws events. Um, but she has to stay positive and they ha she has to make changes. And she said, I mean, Jess said it there, didn't she? I was terrible at throwing. And, you know, she was alluding to the fact that they are the weakest parts of her heptathlon. Mm. I think that, you know, Jess, though, it, it sounded to me like right there that it's over, that she's done. And, and I would, you know, and, and you think about why would you come back when she's won two world championships already, she's had an Olympics at home and won gold and a silver here. The motivation, and just one of those athletes who understands, London, I would believe. that's the motivation. No, but see, it, it, for us, <laughs> we're going to be covering it. But for Jess, she's got to, as Denise said, she's got to go through 12 months of training and be motivated every day to go out there. And so what is that motivation? I get to compete at home. Well, you did that in the Olympics. So the world championships at home will pale in comparison. I get to win a world Paula's championship. Paula's going, no. no. Already, she's already no, won two. Agree. You have to be very, very careful when you make those decisions, as she will do. As she said, she's going to go away and think about it with her family. But I think she'll have to understand that if that motivation isn't there, so what, what is there left to do? Then you're not going to go out and you're not going to train as hard, especially when you've got a kid and a family at home that you'd rather be with. 
there's got to be a pretty big carrot at the end of that in order to go out there and put that time time in away from your family every day. You have to remember she got injured, you know, in the early part of the year, and that's going to be the biggest toll. The heptathlon takes its toll on your body. And um, if she's going to come back, will, does she want to have those, those, you know, just that problems, those problems again? Because they, they may reoccur. Mm. I mean, she's done fantastically well to get her body back into that shape, but the injuries, what? the motivation. FBTM, gold medal.